Today I'm going to take you through the process of going into your lawn and identifying crabgrass. I'm going to show you how you can distinguish it from all of the various look-alike uh, weedy grasses out there. And we're just going to use the process of elimination, kind of like a flow chart. Yeah. But before we get to that flow chart, let me actually describe the characteristics of crabgrass first. Crabgrass has clumping fibrous roots with no rhizomes. It spreads out with a stoloniferous growth pattern. The first leaves emerge in the spring to early summer. Those first leaves are usually about twice as long as they are wide, almost like a little rectangle. As the plant matures, the leaves grow particularly wide and they taper to the pointed leaf tip. The whole leaf really kind of looks like a V. The veins in the leaves are mostly not prominent, except for the center vein. As you look at the base of the newest growth, it emerges from a shoot in a rolled or coiled shape. This is called its vernation. The stem itself does not wrap a small claw-like appendage around the leaf shoots, as it does in many other grasses. This is what is called the oracle, or rather, in this case, the absence of an oracle. And the base of the leaf has a somewhat large lingule. It kind of sticks up a bit, like a hangnail coming off the base of the leaf. Both large and smooth crabgrass varieties have tiny hairs that grow in the collar area of the leaves and the shoots, and those hairs continue up the actual leaf on large crabgrass, but not on smooth crabgrass. This gives you an easy way to differentiate the two types with just an eyeball. Eventually, the plant's growth accelerates during the summer, and the stems start looking a touch purplish. Here I am sitting here telling you all of this information, and right in front of me... There's a purplish stem. That's gonna be crabgrass. I'll get to the flow chart eventually. The stems start looking a touch purplish, while the leaves remain on the lighter or the yellower side of the green shade spectrum. As summer wanes and fall takes off, crabgrass spikelets form in great quantities as the plant produces a profuse amount of seeds. And eventually the grass dies off as colder nights and eventual frosts set in. In this scenario, the areas that were infested with crabgrass typically will overwinter as, as a dirt or a muddy spot, giving you a poorly looking dormant lawn. But with all of that said, crabgrass can still be hard to identify in a lawn. It can be easily confused with other undesirable plants. To kill or remove a weed properly, as you probably understand, you need to know what the plant is after all. So let's get back to the flowchart-like video that I wanted to make for you today, where we identify crabgrass in a lawn through the process of elimination. What's cool about this is you're probably not going to have to get your hands dirty or dig if you don't want to. Now to demonstrate all of this, I'm just going to take you through my front yard. This is a yard that I'm slowly renovating throughout the season, just incrementally. So try your best to pay no attention whatsoever to all of the discoloration that you see out there. Some of that is dying nut sedge. Some of that is uh, undesirable kakuya grass that I'm going to be killing off later in the season, maybe in the fall. And then, of course, some of that is the crabgrass that I am addressing in this video right now. Now, there's an enormous amount that can be said about grass type and weed type identification by all of the various technical stuff. And although I'm going to talk about some of that technical stuff, I'm going to keep it as simple as humanly possible. We're going to start by looking for leaf width. Crabgrass, both hairy, otherwise known as large crabgrass, and smooth crabgrass both have wide blades. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the lawn and look for wide blades. If we see anything growing that has narrow blades, we know it's not crabgrass. Let's go take a look. All right, before we really go into the lawn, I want to start with the elephant in the room. Sometimes you're going to find, I mean often, you're going to find crabgrass like this that's just wildly easy to identify. This is just really obvious. Plus the fact that crabgrass is more likely to be on the fringes, the edges of your property, than in the middle. However, just because it's not obvious doesn't mean it might not be there. It could be there is what I'm trying to, to get at. So we've got a chunk of crabgrass, there's one crawling over, there's one. So with that being said, let's go into the lawn and actually start going through the process of elimination step by step. Let's start by looking for wide leaf blades. Wide leaf blade stuff that you're going to find in the lawn tend to be your tall fescues, your St. Augustines, you're going to have crabgrass, goosegrass, quackgrass, kikuyu grass, and in some cases you might even have some nutsedge that has wider blades. The thing is, nutsedge is not actually a grass, and it's going to be growing straight up, reaching for the sky. It's going to be very different than crabgrass, so you're very unlikely to misidentify it. Let me quickly show you a nutsedge 
that is going wild. As you can see, the blades of the sedges are wide and glossy. I see how they're starting to, these over here are pointing upwards to the sky. As opposed to crabgrass, where when it's healthy, it's still down. This is a brief example of St. Augustine grass. The blades are very wide. This grass needs a little bit of water. It's starting to dry out a little bit. You can tell because the leaves are starting to fold in on themselves, but I digress. A lot of what you see over here is Bermuda grass. These leaves are very, very uh, skinny. Frequently you'll see them referred to as fine leaves. So what we're going to do is we're going to look for wide leaves. Look at these. These leaves stick out like a sore thumb, being particularly wide. That could be crabgrass. Now here as we move into this yellower shade of grass over here, I already know that this is Kaikuyu grass, but I'm going to show you up close. These blades are a little bit wider. So if you had something like this in a small, tiny little patch in your lawn, you weren't sure what it was, this could be crabgrass because it's wide. So basically, what I'm getting at here is you're looking for width. If you can find something wider than everything else, then it could be crabgrass, and we're going to move to the next phase. Look at this right here. See how low this grass is? Much skinnier in width than that. So we got to say, what is that? Is that crabgrass? It's wider. Now, I don't have goose grass or quack grass in the lawn, so I can't actually show you those. Uh, they are very frequently misidentified as crabgrass, and I will get to uh, explaining how to tell the difference without even showing it to you. But for cool season grasses, your perennial rise and your Kentucky blue grasses are always very, um, very narrow bladed. So this is a new patch of Kentucky blue grass that's just slowly starting to come in. Uh, this is a nice little patch of it right here. You can see we've got skinnier blades right next to something like this. This is a wider blade. What is that? It's definitely not Kentucky bluegrass, it's wider. Is it crabgrass? I'll get to that as we move through the progression in this video. Now, let's take a look at fescue. I don't have fescue in the lawn, but I do grow it in a teeny little pot over here. All right, this is a collection of cool season grasses. This right here is a Kentucky 31 tall fescue. This right next to it is a turf type tall fescue. They're both fescues. Notice how skinny this blade is. Now these are really dry. I really need to give these some water, but these blades are way skinnier than these blades. So if you have turf type tall fescue in your lawn, it's not, it's not gonna be anywhere near as wide as a rough fescue or a Kentucky 31 tall fescue. So turf type tall fescue is not going to have that width that you're looking for, but a rough fescue or a K31 will. So in your investigative mode, you're gonna be finding something like this in the lawn thinking, who is that crabgrass? We'll get to it, look at this. It's got a little star pattern. It's kind of starting to look like a crabgrass, but it's not. And I'll show you how to identify the difference. Now, as for the other grasses in this pot, this is a fine fescue. Very, very skinny blade. You're obviously not going to think that's crabgrass. This right here is a perennial rye. It's also a pretty skinny blade. You're not going to think that that's crabgrass. This right here is buffalo grass. Also a very skinny blade. You're not going to really think that this is crabgrass either because of the thinness of the blade. Rough fescue or Kentucky 31, you might want to investigate further. All right, now having combed through our yard space, once we find all of the wide leaf blades out there, kind of flag them at least, I don't know, mentally or maybe with a literal flag, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go find a super duper sharp pair of, pair of scissors. And we're gonna go out there to all of those wide leaf blades and cut them very strategically so that we can check for vernation. This is one of those technical terms, but it's very easy to understand. The vernation is the newest leaves that come out of the plant, the, the baby, the baby leaves. You know, a plant can have a whole bunch of leaves coming off of it. The newest ones are coming out of the middle. Do they come out rolled or do they come out folded? This is very easy to find without doing any digging, just a pair of scissors. And before I take you into the lawn and actually start checking for vernation in uh, the wide 
blades that I'm finding out in this lawn, I'll tell you right up front, of all of those wide blades, the most, most likely ones that you're gonna find in your lawn, only three of them have a rolled vernation. So it's coming out of the bud as a roll, as like a coil, whatever you wanna call that. It's a circle. Of those three, you're gonna have tall fescue, quack grass, and crab grass. Everything else that's wide, everything else that you're likely to find in your lawn that is wide, is not coming out with rolled vernation. All right, because I know for a fact that this is Kentucky 31 tall fescue because I grew it from seed, I will show you this first. So what we're gonna do, see this right here? This leaf coming out of the ground, if we isolate it here, we've got old leaf, then we got the next leaf coming up, then the next leaf. Here, this newest one coming out of the ground, what we're gonna do is we're gonna snip it way down at the bottom. And then, I'm gonna try my very best to take the best picture possible for you. All right, now if I was a professional photographer or videographer, I could get you some sort of macro fancy close up picture of this, but that is a circular coil it's a uh, rounded vernation. It's not folded. Let me go show you a folded one now. So in my lawn, as I've said, I've got a good bit of common kikuyu in here, which I actually don't want. Here is my scissors. But I am thinking about planting an eventual uh, plot of improved kikuyu grass. And here is my test plot or my test pot of improved kaikuyu grass, which I have also grown from seed. This is called Wittit Kaikuyu. It is a very controlled seed. You cannot buy this seed uh, just anywhere. You gotta be in very, very specific locations, one of which I live in. This stuff is basically considered a, a very, like enormously invasive grass type in the, I don't know, it's like a weed, really. It is a grass, but it's considered to be like an invasive weed all over the world. But this is an improved version. But if we do that same snip test to check for vernation, I know for a fact it's folded because it's just what it is. And I'll prove it to you. Everything looks round, but here, let me grab my scissors. Remember, we go to the newest shoot, one in the middle, newest leaf. We go all the way to the base of it, as far down as we can. In fact, Let's see here, see how low I can get. The lower you get, the easier it is to see. Now I'm just gonna cut the whole thing off, take this inside for better lighting. But that little spot right there in the middle, that's what we're looking at. So let me take it inside. Or shoot, maybe I can do it right here. Yep, there it is. Right down the middle. Let's see, right down the middle where I cut it, it's folded. It's like a little envelope. Here, I've gone back to the fescue so you can tell the difference. The lighting is better here. Yeah, it's a nice little coil on the inside. Now, having gone and shown you all of that in great detail, or at least attempting to show it to you in great detail, virtually everything that you can find in the lawn is gonna be folded except for tall fescue, annual ryegrass, if you're gonna put, some, if you have some annual ryegrass down, buffalo grass and even zoysia grass is rolled, but basically everything else is folded, which is convenient because crabgrass and quackgrass are both rolled as well. So we're gonna go take a look at the wide leaf blades that we're finding in the lawn, and we're gonna go and cut them right there at the base to find out if it's rolled. If it's rolled, then it's only three options. Tall fescue, quackgrass, or crabgrass. And I could go up all around the edges, but for a long time, earlier this spring, I knew that there was a patch of wide, wide blade grasses over here and right here in the middle of the lawn. Because it was early in the season, I didn't actually think it was crabgrass because we think of crabgrass as a summer annual. It comes back every year from seed the last year. Where I live here in Southern California, it never really gets all that cold and soil temperatures get up over 75 degrees very early in the season. 
So this stuff started growing in the spring before summer happened. I, it just wasn't on my radar. So let's come down here and take a look at these wide leaves. Look at those. There's so many of them. It doesn't have that like clump with a side-to-side uh, -side crab grassy look that we're all accustomed to seeing, like with one little crabgrass plant going out, kind of looking like a crab stretching across the ground. This just looks like a mat. So let's go take a look at it. Let's just pull this one out and grab our scissors and take a look. All right, so here's that little piece of grass that I just pulled out of the ground, trying to figure out if this is crabgrass. I'm gonna go to the middle leaf and I clip that right at the bottom. Now let's look at it up close. I'm gonna peel this leaf, peel this leaf back a little bit so we can get a better look. Now let's get in close. Now, if you actually go through your lawn, snipping at these, uh, the bases of these wide leaf blades and finding the vernation, if you're finding them to be uh, circular, coiled, round, then the next step is to narrow it down. At this point, you most likely have tall fescue, probably some sort of clumping, rough fescue in your lawn, or you've got quack grass or crab grass. To narrow it down beyond that, we're gonna go and look for oracles. Oracles are kind of like little fingers. They're like little fingers uh, that the stem has. They wrap around the leaf a little bit. Many grass types have long fingers that wrap all the way around and come together on the other side of the leaf blade. Some of them wrap around a little bit, leaving a gap. And then some of them, there's no fingers at all. So the three that we have left, quack grass and fescue, have oracles that wrap around, but crabgrass doesn't. So now I'm gonna go back over to that patch of wide leaf blades and check for oracles. See how the color and the I don't know, the consistency of the grass changes instantly once we get to there. It's a little bit lighter green and everything's a little bit taller. As I get in closer, it's gonna be rougher, more rough, I should say. Pleasant, rough. All right, here's a nice leaf coming up. Dig down to the bottom, pull it out. So here at the bottom of these leaves, as they're coming off of the stem, an oracle is essentially this leaf coming down and wrapping around and kind of holding on. You don't get that with this, so chances are very good that this is crabgrass. Let me show you what fescue looks like so you can actually see what an oracle is in all of its glory. All right, here's the Kentucky 31 tall fescue again. I just, just snipped it off my plant right now. And you can see here at the bottom, see how the bottom of the leaf kind of wraps around to the front side of the leaf, almost like it's holding on for dear life. That's an oracle. Now the oracles can eventually get even bigger and they wrap around and they really look like almost like a, almost like fingers that are overlapping each other around it. You also know that this is tall fescue because you've got many prominent veins on it. Whereas the crabgrass doesn't have all of those prominent veins, it only has a single prominent vein running down the middle. You also notice that the leaf shape is long and it doesn't really look like a V. Now this tip, this leaf tip has already been cut off, but it just keeps on going. If you compare that to the leaf tip of a crabgrass plant, it looks like a V wider here than it is here and this is wider than it is here this is wider than it is up at the top it just gets narrower and narrower and narrower like a v shape coming to a tip at the end and you notice that you don't see all of those prominent veins like with fescue just the middle vein or the middle crease now at this point i'm very certain that that's crabgrass in my lawn however if i went and inspected it and i did see oracles sitting on that uh, leaf then that would lead me to believe that it's probably quack grass 
And then if I really wanted to be sure, I could grab a shovel and dig into the ground because quack grass is going to have rhizomes. Fescue is not going to have rhizomes. Neither is crabgrass. Crabgrass does not have rhizomes underground either. It's just kind of a tuft of hair, of hair fibrous uh, root system under there. You can just kind of pull it out of the ground very easily. That's only if you have like a single plant or two, however. If you got a big infestation like I've got over there, then it becomes far less likely to be able to fix the problem just by pulling or digging. Now, I also want to point this out. No matter how advanced your uh, or developed, well-developed your crabgrass gets, the leaves are never really going to get much longer. So this particular plant right here, You've got, I mean, this stolen is starting to get, or this stem is really starting to get thick and long. It's got the purple uh, hue to it that is um, to be expected with a lot of crab crabgrass plants that are mature. But every leaf, like even the old leaves, the new leaves, they're not that long. So checking for length of blade that hasn't been cut is another way to do this. Most grass blades will just keep getting longer, longer, longer. The crabgrass really won't. And no matter how mature a stolen gets for Bermuda grass, it's just not going to turn purple. Now other stolons will. St. Augustine stolons do. Buffalo grass, their stolons don't. Maybe a little bit. But man, they're super duper skinny compared to the stem of a crabgrass plant. Even Kikuyu grass has a stem that gets really, really thick and meaty, but it doesn't turn purple. Now, if you do have a lot of crabgrass in the lawn, like I've got back here, I'm gonna go ahead and use the chemical route now. Probably won't have to do it again in future years. The best product to kill crabgrass out of most lawns, not all lawns, but most lawns is quinclorac. Most grass types are gonna be uh, quinclorac tolerant, but you can scan this QR code up here to take a look at the Terpenganic website for the full, uh, the full article, the full written text about how to kill off crabgrass out of the lawn uh, efficiently, depending on the lawn that you have. Of course, I'll also link to it down in the description below. But to keep things simple for this video, because it's long enough, I'm just gonna spray the lawn down with an over-the-counter Spectricide bottle. It's a broadleaf weed killer plus crabgrass. Uh, it's got a little bit of sulfentrazone in there, which is gonna attack any uh, sedges that I happen to have in the lawn. It's also gonna kind of discolor uh, some of the Bermuda that I have in the lawn, but only temporarily. I'm okay with that. There is quinclorac premixed in here. It's not going to be as potent as straight quinclorac, but I think it'll do to get rid of the majority of what I have in the lawn. There'll probably be some stragglers that uh, make it through this application. Now, I do have a minimal amount of just general broadleaf weeds in the lawn, so some of the other active ingredients in there are going to be going down onto the lawn, and they're going to be kind of wasted a little bit, which I don't really feel happy about, but there are a handful, and I just don't feel like I need to go out and buy a gigantic bottle of straight quinclorac when I don't expect to need to use it uh, in the future seasons. Getting rid of most of what's here right now, plus throwing down pre-emergent in the spring, this is basically not going to be an issue in this lawn going forward. Basically, this small little bottle of spectricide is probably going to be enough for me. Now, if you do run a St. Augustine or a centipede lawn, then make sure to take a look down in the description below for the full uh, kind of tutorial on how to kill off crabgrass out of your lawn because it is different. And if you run a cool season lawn, then there's actually other options available to you to kill off that crabgrass in the lawn outside of just pulling it out of the ground. I discussed those other alternatives also down on that article linked below. No matter what you do though, make sure to deal with any crabgrass that you have in your lawn now before fall. Certainly you want to prevent it in the spring, but if you've got it in the middle of the summer, you want to deal with it before it goes to seed. Once the temperatures start dropping, and especially once frosts start hitting, the crabgrass is really going to become prolific in pushing up seed heads. This is one of very many reasons why I think fall lawn care really starts in the month of August, or at least at the end of summer. Simple fact of the matter is this is one of those steps that most people just put off until it's way too late in the season. So because you're watching this video towards the end of summer, hopefully, make sure to watch this next video uh, up, up here in the corner. This is all about fall lawn care. This is what you need to do to do, I mean, it's fall everything. That's what it says, everything. Figure out what you gotta do now for the fall so that you don't miss out on the most important season of the year in the lawn.